All right, so I've got a very interesting, uh, another interesting 3D light effect that uh, most users will probably find a little bit more easy to, to create than the last light effect. I know some people were having trouble with it, and it came down to a number of issues, whether it's a graphics card or the display or the machine or something like that. But i got to be honest, we tried it around the office on several different machines, and it worked fine. But people were still having some problems, so I thought I'd come up with an alternative method that I know works that doesn't use that volume effect to create a very interesting light beam effect. In fact, this way is a little bit better because you can actually use it in a practical sense on a photograph. So here's what we're going to do. Here I have a file that's cr that I created. It's, simply, it's just a simple square document, 7x7 seven seven at 100 pixels per inch. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer. And we are going to add a new 3D primitive shape. So we'll go to the 3D menu, go to New Shape from Layer, and choose Cone. So it gives me the cone inside here, and there it is on the layer, or as a 3D layer. So I'm going to go in the window menu and open up the 3D panel. We'll drag this out. And what I want to do first is actually lengthen this cone. So I'm going to go into the toolbar here and go down here to my 3D rotation tools and just choose any tool because what we're going to use is actually the axis widget here, which is this funny little gadget right here. You can actually reposition it. And this allows me to modify the positioning and shape, overall shape, of my 3D object. So what I'm going to do is hover my mouse over this blue arrow, which is my up and down. And we can go and hover over that little square and just click and drag up, and it will lengthen my cone shape here. There we go. Now, over here inside of the 3D panel, I'm going to click on this second icon, which is the mesh section. And you'll see that this 3D shape is comprised of two meshes, the bottom shape and the cone. Well, all I really need is the cone in this case, so I'm really just going to go ahead and turn this off by turning on, clicking on the icon right here next to bottom. So now I just have the cone. In fact, if we go in here and rotate this, you can see the cone is now, well, the bottom of the cone is now gone. So now what we're going to do is go inside the material section and go down here to where it says opacity and go here and create a new texture. So you just click on this icon next to the word or next to the setting for opacity and go to new texture. And the new window will open up. Go ahead and leave it the same size as the existing document. Go ahead and click OK. And what it's done is gone ahead and filled it with a transparent color, which is no color at all, which interprets it as nothing. That's why my cone has disappeared. So simply go into your icon once again and this time choose open texture. And there you can see the file is got a transparent fill on it. So let's go ahead and fill it with white. Just press Option Delete. And if I click Save on this document, you'll see it updates in the original file. Since it's filled with white, it's revealing everything. So now what we're going to do is work on this mask layer, this mask file here. So once again, I'm going to close this so you can just so you know where we're at. We're on the cone shape. We've created a new document attached to the opacity setting here, which is cone material. You see it right there, it's attached to that. So we'll simply click on that icon and go down here to open texture. Inside here, we're going to be working to create a custom mask for our 3D shape. So I'm going to start with creating a new blank layer and go into the filter menu and choose, actually, you know, we have to fill it with a color can't apply this filter to an empty layer, so press Shift Delete and use 50% gray and click OK. Now make sure your foreground and background colors are set to the default black and white here and just uh, press the D key. And we're going to go under Filter to render uh, fibers right here. There we go. And you can just go ahead and leave it at the uh, default setting here, which is a variance at 16, strength at 4. Click OK. Filter again, and then go to Blur and choose Motion Blur. And we're going to have the angle at 90, which is straight up and down, and set the distance to about 250 pixels. That looks pretty good. And we'll click OK. So now we've got the kind of streaks going on here. Well, now what we're going to do is go and grab the Gradient tool. And inside here, we're going to use the foreground, the transparent gradient, and just come in here from the bottom and just drag up. And that's going to fade our gradient here to black. So now what we're going to do is just the opposite. Up here at the top, we're going to fade this to white, coming in from the bottom, or coming in from the top there. 
Now with the graphic looking like this on and having that layer selected, we're going to go to Filter, Distort, Polar Coordinates, Rectangular to Polar and click OK. And there we've got our shape that's going around the center because the center point of this file is the center point of our cone here. So just like a layer mask works, the white will reveal, the gray areas will show some transparency, and the black will be invisible altogether. So when we close this file and save the changes, watch what happens to our cone. Now it has become a cool 3D light beam. Now the lighting's a little off on it, so you're just going to go in here into your first icon here, which is the 3D scene, and just go to the global ambient color and choose white. And now we have very cool 3D light. We can manipulate the positioning and the angle and everything. In fact, I've got an example here. I've got a image of a club here with this dance scene going on. Well, let's go ahead and enhance the lights here with our cool 3D light. Let's just take this and drag it into the file. There is my light beam. So now we're just going to use the 3D tools here to manipulate it into position. So I'm just going to grab the 3D slide tool push this light back in space a little bit give it a little bit of a rotation here there we go grab the 3D pan tool and then just push it to where it's a little bit out of frame right at the top there in fact I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller so let's go and select the scale tool and just drop down the size there a little bit and then once again we'll use the 3D pan tool just to slide it up now I can see it's considerably wider than the area of the pink light that I'm going to create here. So just grab this little square for the width of our shape and just click and drag to the right and it will squeeze in that shape. And now just to make the light blend in with everything else, make it the same color as the light in that area. So we'll just go in here and add a layer style. So double click on the layer, go to outer glow, and then click on the color swatch, open up the color picker and just locate a color that's similar to that of the color of the light, light that we're over right now and click OK and there we have our light. Now if the light seems too intense you can always drop the opacity of the layer or go inside of the opacity file once again and just simply use your levels, just open up levels, just press command or control L and just choke in that light effect a little bit using the mid slider, midway slider here or the mid-tone slider click OK, close the dock, save the changes and now the light beam is a little less intense and we can reposition it anywhere we want inside of our layout can even position it where the light is kind of facing at you and perhaps even increase the size and that will make the light beam that much more intense. So another way to use 3D shapes to create light effects. You can, so you're not actually using a 3D light, but you're creating a shape that is going to stand in as the light beam effect, but it's in 3D, so you can reposition it and use multiple of the same object in any given situation. Very cool stuff. I hope that works for you, and we'll see you next time.